Franklin, it's dull being a man. I'm a fairly young woman. I'm smart, attractive, and successful. Consequently, people tend to stay away from me. They're intimidated, especially men. The only men who ever get up the gumption to ask me out are other politicians or high-ranking civil servants. These are not men who know how to fuck. Like everything else with politicians, they want the reputation and credit without any of the heavy lifting. They talk themselves up as great lovers with a lot of experience, many good references, but when it's time to put my pussy where their mouth is, nada. I tried fucking some of the underlings, but they want to cuddle and uh, pillow talk politics and how they promise they won't use this to push an agenda through or get favors. As so though I would feel like I owe them something for mediocre missionary sex. <laughs> Usually I fire them. Sometimes when they're particularly bad, I get them audited. <laughs> it's a small town, so I can't really fuck around too much. Everyone talks. I've got even more eyes on me than usual as well, being a woman in power. Power is the greatest aphrodisiac. And since I'm the only one around here with any balls, I'm the only one who gets me off. I've taken to watching porn while I go over city council meeting agendas at home and very discreetly shoving my pocket rocket up my twat at school board meetings. I was toying with the idea of nipple clamps and a butt plug for the evening's campaign policy reviews when a man burst into my office, locked the door behind him, and moved my couch in front of it. Excuse me, what are you doing? Step back from the desk, lady. I have a temper. Uh, I take measures to keep it under control. I live by myself. I'm self-employed. And by and large, I only go to church functions and uh, county fairs. So when I got the message that I was being evicted and my business was being shut down on some stupid zoning technicality so they could make way for a new bypass, I was worried I might take it poorly. So I went down to City Hall uh, to talk to the local comptroller about this worry, but he didn't seem very concerned. Uh, he dismissed me as some stupid country bumpkin, and I stabbed him in the temporal lobe with his letter opener. So I ran, and I ended up here. I threw the desk on its side, pushed it up against the window. Nobody was getting in here until I'd come up with some sort of plan. What's going on here? You know that guy, the city comptroller? Kind of nebbish sheet guy, looks like a Dilbert character? Yeah, I killed him. Oh. Yeah, and funnily enough, all my problems weren't solved. So if I were you, I'd sit down, shut up, and let me figure out what the hell I'm gonna do. Correction, if you were me, you wouldn't have been a fucking moron and killed a public official in City Hall, Dick Guy. <laughs> and who the fuck are you? I'm the mayor. Oh, the mayor. That's funny, because I got a message saying I owe you something. Oh yeah, what's that? I punched her in the face. He punched me in the face? I can't believe it, right in the mouth. You didn't hold back either, and I know I've been hit before. <laughs> back before I'd gotten into public service, back before I was in power, back when I could fuck. Speaking of which, this guy's not bad looking. <laughs> he's lean, but he's got some muscle and a nice violent streak as well. Mm -hmm. It's been a while since I've had a guy like that, a guy who could really dish it out. Look at him, covering up the windows, trying to come up with a plan. He's all panicked, he's desperate, he's dangerous. I wonder if he's even really noticed me. How my demure little business shirt is unbuttoned one button farther than it should be. How I'm obviously wearing a bra that's pushing my already ample breasts up and out, right into view. A bra that's meant to be torn off. I wonder if he's noticed how short my skirt is. I wonder if he's noticed that I'm not wearing any panties. I Oh my God, I'm touching myself. Oh my God, she's touching herself. <laughs> um, suddenly there's a knock at the door. A voice yells from the other side, ma'am, ma'am, is everything okay in there? And then she gets up, she walks over to me, smiles, gives me a wink, and then she says, Oh please, please, he's in here, he's in here, and he's barricading the door, he's out of his mind, he's completely uncontrollable. And then she stuck her hand down my pants. And he's armed! <laughs> she squeezed and pulled. Very well armed. Don't come in, he's a man unhinged. Who knows what he's gonna do? She was now pumping me hard inside my pants. She leaned up and whispered into my ear, her hand still moving hard and fast over my cock. What are you going to do? And that was it. 
The dam broke. I ripped open her shirt, tore off her bra, leaving her large, healthy breasts free and exposed. I pulled up her skirt. She wasn't wearing any panties. I pushed her up against the wall. I undo my pants, letting them fall to my ankles. I grab her legs, hook them around my arms, and I'm inside her, fucking her. Hard. He pinned me to the wall right beside a picture of me with the orphans over at St. Mary's. <laughs> he was thrusting into me so hard that I could see the picture shaking and I found myself worrying if it would fall. Then I realized here I was getting the fuck of my life and I was worried about a picture falling. This is what happens when you get too wrapped up in this stupid bullshit. I hate worrying about how people see me not being able to get what I want. And you know what else? I fucking hate those needy little orphan fucks. All I care about right now in this moment is dick. And I'm getting plenty of it with one arm wrapped around my assailant's neck. I take my other arm and throw the picture from the wall. The cop outside yells in again, is everything all right? I swear to God, if you come in here, I will tear this bitch apart. <laughs> As I said those words, the woman went rabid. She tore my shirt to my shoulders and sunk her teeth into my collarbone. It hurt. I pulled out of her and threw her to the floor. She looked up at me, smiling smugly, self-righteously. Something about that look and the pain of that fucking bite, it pissed me off and she knew it. So I slapped her hard across the face. And when she looked up at me again, she was still smiling, but it was different. I was still hard. My cock was covered in her, practically dripping with her. She got up on her knees and she licked the length of me, taking in her own juices and my pre-cum. And when she got to the tip of my dick, she took me into her mouth. She began sucking on me, caressing me with her tongue. Then, without looking or adjusting her motion, her hands reached out and found mine. She placed both hands on the side of her head, getting me to grab her hair. I knew what she wanted, and I gave it to her. I pulled. He has a great dick. Not incredibly long, but wide. It's always the width that gets me. I've sucked a fair amount of dick in my day, and I can take length, but I love it when they're wide. I love it when it feels like it's taking up my whole mouth and throat. As he's pulling himself deep inside, I feel myself gag a little. I question whether or not I'll actually be able to take it. My throat is no longer a throat. It's a tool. It's in service. It makes sounds throats don't make. Sounds like machinery, pumps, vacuums. Filters. I'm no longer producing spit or mucus. I'm producing lubricants. I am a machine. As I look up at him, my mouth and throat filled with his cock, my eyes are tearing with tears of appreciation. I feel used. I finally feel I'm being put to good use. When he makes eye contact with me, I feel him start to pulse in my mouth. He's about to come, but he cannot do that yet. I push him out of me, allowing myself a sharp intake of breath. We don't have much time left. Still crouched in front of me, she turned around so her back was towards me. She lifted her ass up to my crotch. She put her hands on her knees, and holding her body at a 90 degree angle, she turns around and says, Finish me off. My left hand grabs a handful of her flesh around the hip. My right hand guides me inside her dripping pussy. And as I'm about to begin, she turns around and stops me. Not there. Up a little bit. For all the progress women have made in the past century, it's a shame it's still so hard to get a good ass fuck. Most girls get two kinds of anal. They get liberal anal, overly considerate coddling, the guy asking, are you all right with this every two minutes? Or they get conservative anal, nation building anal as I call it, where as soon as they find out how to get in there, they take the thing over forgetting that it actually belongs to someone else. <laughs> the best anal is the anal of personal responsibility. I put my ass in the hands of the man I feel best equipped to manage it, and he, in turn, respects this decision, taking into account my hints and desires. Even though the woman who loves anal frequently does so because it is wrong or dirty, it is not an open invitation to mismanagement. If at any time he fails in his anal responsibilities, it will be gone. The best anal is non-aggression, victimless crime, anal, free market, 
Anal. Libertarian. Anal. She braced herself against the desk, barricading the window. As I went to enter her, I told her to let me know if she felt any pain. I took her laughter as a sign that that wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> Figuring that was invitation enough, I pushed myself inside her tight little hole and she wasn't laughing anymore. The laughter turned quickly into low, guttural moans. I saw her fingers dig into the wood of the desk, her nails scraping against the varnish. Then her arms went limp. She put the side of her face against the collarbone and flat against the desk so that with every thrust she was slammed again and again against the hard wood. For a minute I was worried I might hurt her, that if things get out of control I might even break something. I worried, but only for a moment. She didn't seem to be feeling much pain. In fact, she didn't seem to be feeling much of anything. Her eyes had gone hazy and sort of rolled into the back of her head. There was this long string of drool coming out of her open mouth. She was gone. But not entirely. Her right arm suddenly came alive, flying up and rubbing her clit in tight concentric circles. I felt her already tight asshole begin to tense up and draw me further inside. The moans became tighter as well. And then she was coming. And then so was I. I blacked out. <laughs> When I came to, my body felt like plasma. The only thing I could actually feel, the only feeling I could name and identify was the remains of the man sliding down my thighs. I came into a free, ethereal lucidity. I saw the man collapsed and hunched over on the floor, trying to regain his breathing. It had been good for him, I knew it. I had been decimated by the act. He was being decimated by the comprehension, the realization that it all had, in fact, actually happened. He is gone. He doesn't hear me open the drawer of my overturned desk. He doesn't register that I've removed a gun hidden in the drawer because one never knows what could happen to a mayor in a backwards little town like this, especially a woman mayor. He doesn't hear the trigger pull, the sound of expulsion, the clatter and splat of brain and bone. He is gone. I pull down my skirt, adjust my shirt, sit in my chair and prepare myself. They'll be bursting in here any moment. I have to look shocked, look traumatized, prepare for interviews, re-election campaigns, senatorial campaigns. People like strong, no-nonsense women nowadays. Hillary, Condi, Gina Davis on that show. What is that show? Focus. <laughs> this could be huge. This could be huge. This could be the best thing that could have happened. I wonder how they fuck in DC. Thank you.